So I didn't do it myself until a few oh months God. on. <laughs> oh my and God, then Albert. finally I went on a beach holiday. Yeah. Uh, I one day when I was lying on the on the sand and I looked up in the sky and the tears started to like just roll. And I didn't know what happened. I was like, I was not thinking anything was happening, what's happening? You know? So Were you there for many hours just yeah, like I don't bawling, know how long yeah. I was there, but it was just it just mm. went on. So I was like, Oh, what's happening? I don't even know. So everything that was kept inside just came out suddenly and I uh, yeah. So that wow. was what I went through. Hi, this is Jean Danka and welcome to the Are You OK podcast. In every single episode, we've got different guests. I'm so excited today that we've got actor extraordinaire. He is also an author, real nice guy, very handsome face. Elvin Ong! Oh, hi. hi. <laughs> extraordinaire. Yes. <laughs> so let's start. I mean, I want to know what's been keeping you up at night lately has there been some stuff on your <laughs> mind that <laughs> <laughs> wow uh, straight into it straight into right. it <laughs> I think I keep myself up uh, every night <laughs> are you a, a late night person anyway usually uh, yes I am I um, okay. even when there's filming the next day right? Yeah. I go to about like 12 1am this whole year I've been just filming uh, my long form oh drama God, right? so yes. throughout so uh, I just managed to finish it uh, it was the whole year it took up the whole year wow. the only break there was was during the, the heightened alert two weeks yeah. then I had a break other than that uh, I'm trying to get into some new things uh, yeah. learn some new things uh, experience uh, life all over again <laughs> start again you know it's uh, it's very different times now yeah. I think anything goes and I think uh, at different different phases of your life whatever you want to try to do just, just go ahead and do it yeah. you know? I want to talk a little bit about uh, grief right. and about your dad. Mm -hmm. um, I know that your father passed away in 2012. Mm -hmm. You were smack in the middle of production at that time. And it took you like, I think four months later where you were actually able to grieve properly. It was called a suspension of grief. <laughs> oh my god! Right, suspend it, keep it somewhere, lock it somewhere, yeah. and then you deal with it later. So it was really tough. It was th probably the the blackest period of my life, I would say, because uh, first of all, I just entered studio. Studio is always like very fast and three cameras. I see. So our scripts, we have to be very like good in them, right? Yeah. So it's top to bottom. And then uh, on the first day of studio, usually studios are very limited period. And then on the first day, um, when I received news, and then I was. Uh, I rushed to hospital uh, and then my dad had to go for an operation immediately the next day, next okay. morning. So I was like uh, shuffling between hospital and work. I didn't go home for the four days mm. and then after he passed on mm. uh, because of complications. And uh, when I when he was going into theatre, right, well, I didn't even see him in. It was like two hours before I had to go back to filming. I said, uh, I dare not say goodbye to my dad. Mm. I didn't dare to. I felt it was not. <laughs> it was inauspicious, and I said, uh, "Dad, I'm going to work." You know, right? So that moment spoke a lot to me uh, until now. And um, of course, after that, he passed away. I had to deal with the wake for a week. My dad liked the uh, like crowded. You know, like he has a big family, so all the village, the whole village mm. of uh, relatives were like there. Like it, like right now, when right he, now, when, right? he, when he passed on, he yeah. waited till like everyone was there, oh sort of, gosh. sort of. So. After he was buried, my family could be together. My mom, my sister, brother. And I had to go back straight right into my scripts because the next day I was filming. Wow. And then, because everything was not done before that for that week, everything was squeezed in like 10 days studio. Yeah. And every day was 7 a.m. to 1 a.m. Oh my god. That's gosh. like uh, 18 hours. Yeah. And 18 hours and me not being in the state of mind to do it. It was a romantic comedy. Oh my gosh. Right. Elvin! And then I went through... so. So when after my dad was buried, immediately when I was home, I couldn't be with family and then deal with each other. You know, yeah. I told my brother and sister to look after my mum, mm. and I went back straight to my scripts. I, I hated that feeling sort of, of course, because it's yeah. like I, I cannot. I had to put my emotions, everything aside, and like okay, be professional, do your work. And when I went filming, the first day was okay, and then uh, you know. When I went back home at night, like imagine one thirty a.m., I have to get to my scripts for the next day of 18 hours of work. Oh and then I, when I spoke to my dad at the altar, I said, uh, Pa, I cannot talk to you for long. I have to <laughs> go to my scripts. Oh my God. Uh, I only said like people. less than one minute because I was so stressed up. So it was tough. Imagine talking to him then and it was like, he's my one of the most important persons in my life. I couldn't deal with it. I had to get back to work because my work is like, it's about everyone. I cannot hold anyone up. 
So of course, there was really compassion. They helped me with a lot of things, but I still had to get back. So I had to deal with it. Yeah. Uh, so the first, second, third day was still okay. Like it was just the beginning. Yeah. And then it's like, oh, I'm done with the first day, second day, third day. On the third day, I almost uh, broke down. I called my producer. I said, I'm going to be half an hour to one hour late. I now, right now, I just feel like hiding under my table and not see anybody. Yeah. Uh, I was... I, something happened to me. There was some reaction. I was shivering, trembling. I didn't know how to do with everything. Yeah. Right? And getting to work, I feel like, because I was not in the state of mind, sometimes I'll be doing like line by line and everyone's like, I feel like I had so much pressure. Right. Mm. So everyone was accommodating, but I couldn't and then we just had to do it. So I, I didn't dare to leave home. <clears throat> Called my producer. At last, I still went and I just went on. So I thought after studio would be better, like 10 days nonstop. Okay, it was really sleeping an hour a day. Really sleeping one hour a day. Oh because while I was reading my scripts, I was like falling asleep. Mm. And when I was like sleeping, maybe I was dreaming about the scripts. So yeah. I never knew when I was awake or, or asleep. Oh my God. Elvis. So it was oh a really God. black period of my life. For, yeah. Yeah. So 10 over days. Then after that, I thought we'll be going outdoors to film. So less uh, tedious. But yeah. it was still because everything was still crammed. So when I finished everything... And when I finished it, I was like, oh, I could take one breath. And then, no, let's deal with mum. So I took mum to, like, because my dad, he didn't want to go, like, he, he's, Engl he's, he's more like uh, Mandarin speaking. So okay. he didn't go to Europe. Mm. So I was like, I want to take mum to Europe, mm. you know. Uh, um, so I took her to Italy, just two of us, and mum and I. So I, had to I wanted to deal with her. Um, my mum and I, we are very similar. Uh, and then... Um, Sometimes we, we quarrel a bit, but because she's like my close friend, you know. So I took her on a, on a trip, uh, eight days, uh, Italy. That's what I could manage then, eight mm. days. And dealt with mum. So I didn't do it myself until a few oh months my on. <laughs> oh my and God, then finally man. I went on a beach holiday. Yeah. Uh, I One day when I was lying on the, on the sand and I looked up in the sky and the tears started to like just roll. And I didn't know what happened. I was like, I was not thinking anything. What's happening? What's happening? You know? So were you there for many hours just yeah, like Yeah, I don't bawling, know how long yeah. I was there, but it was just it just mm. went on. So I was like, oh what's happening? I don't even know. So everything that was kept inside just came out suddenly and I uh, yeah. So that was wow. what I went through. Um during that time I I felt that I was still strong enough to try to handle because I maybe I'm like the eldest son. I feel like I have responsibility. So a lot of it is down to mental strength and character, I would say, uh, no matter how tough, how impossible it gets, you know. Uh, when I think back, it, maybe it's not such a big deal, but it was such a big deal of then. Of course, it's a big <laughs> it deal. It was crazy, right? But yeah, but a lot of people might have it worse. There are worse things happening. There are more things happening. So I think in life, uh, really anything can happen. Uh, how good it gets, uh, enjoy it. How bad it gets, you survive it. Just, just... Just, yeah, but you have to keep learning and uh, never give up because it's easy to be weak. It's easy easy to just say, ah, I cannot, I cannot. But just just keep going, just keep going. I think, yeah. How did you manage to crawl out of that grief? Um, Because I, I, uh, I think that was 2012. I lost my mom a year after that in 2013. Hmm. And the thing I find about grief, right, is that it never really goes away. Grief is... It's like ebb and flow. Sometimes mm -hmm. you feel more of it. Sometimes you feel less of it. But actually, the grief kind of stays with you forever. Mm -hmm. Not. I also don't feel like I want it to go away, right? Yep, I kind of yep. want to always feel it. Right. Um, is that the same for you? It's a very strange feeling, right? Yeah. Uh, because when you feel like, why am I not feeling anymore? I feel like I'm forgetting. Mm -hmm. I feel like, am I letting my dad down, let's say. But now when I talk about my dad, it's nearly 10 years now, I actually feel... Um, I've accepted it. It's very important for acceptance. I think it's also important to have the whole process. Uh, and that's why I, I really felt that I needed that process of grief. Yeah. Grief, grieving, you know, like yeah. being in the family and stuff like that. But I didn't have that. It was suspended, you know. Yeah. So, but I think it's important not to, to hide it. Just face it. It's okay. You yeah. don't always have to be positive all the time. Yeah. You can be, you don't always have to be optimistic. You can be down. You can be fallen. You can be anything you want to be. It's okay. Yeah. It's okay. Especially for guys, I think you're always sort of told to be like the stoic, be the man, be the, you know, mm -hmm. always keep it together. But actually, I think we've come to realize more and more that... <laughs> 
um, the healthy thing to do for yourself and the people around you is actually to let that surface whatever feelings you have. Just feel the feelings when they come and right. they will they will naturally go. I've always been uh, probably also more sentimental, more sensitive. So uh, I'm very sort of in touch with uh, emotions, although I'm very rational as well. Yeah. Yeah. Don't go into any kind of a trap and uh, deceive anyone or deceive yourself or to hide anything. There's no need for pretense. But once in a while, if you needed that mask, you needed to be away, that's also fine. Whatever yeah. works, you know. Yeah. You know, I was going to share this quote that about <clears throat> grief that I really love and I find like it's so true, right? I'll share with you um, and see whether you think like it's the same for you. Mm-hmm. Okay, it's quite long. <laughs> it's, by, <laughs> it's by Anne Lemet. Okay. Okay, so she says, You will lose someone you can't live without and your heart will be badly broken. And the bad news is that you never completely get over the loss of your beloved. But that is also the good news. They live forever in your broken heart that doesn't seal back up and you come through. It's like having a broken leg that never heals perfectly, that still hurts when the weather gets cold, but you learn to dance with the limp. <laughs> do you do you find so that? So beautiful. So beautiful, huh? Yes, Love it that. is. How have you learned to dance with the limp? Because I'm still <laughs> learning. <laughs> yeah, really? I'm still okay. learning how to dance right. with the limp. Uh, I think I've always uh, embraced, um, I think I've always embraced the weakness, okay. uh, embraced cracks embrace imperfections i'm not someone who likes to like put up a front mm. because uh, actually it's the imperfections the the flaws that make us uh, humane make us real make us personal yeah so i think that's fine uh, you don't always have to be what what it's it's said to be like it has to be perfect it has to be like this role model so yep. maybe previously i was trying to be the role model mm. but i feel like with my imperfections and whatever it is now <laughs> i'm more of a role model yeah yeah Yes, yeah. yes. And the fact that you embrace it. Yes. Right? Yeah. Also, I find that as an actor, you can use all these for the, you know, to build up your repertoire of like things to think about as an actor. Um, a little bit? I don't think it that way. Okay. Uh, it's not a logical thought. Mm. It, it just happens because uh, with acting now, I would say I'm enjoying my job and everything much more now. Yeah. Um, because why? Uh, initially, I'll be... Because... I set high expectations for myself and then when whatever people say, and I'm so sensitive, so I'm always questioning myself. I'm like super low confidence, low self-esteem. So everything's, uh, oh, it's, it's such a struggle. But uh, I needed that process as well. I'm not complaining about that, you know. Mm. But where I am today, for me now, I, I'm so much happier. I think I was more pessimistic and, you know, and like more emo. I was a writer, uh, more of a writer as well. So yeah. it's, it's different stages of life. Yeah. But right now I'm like, Okay, if you say say good things about me, huh? I'm like, yeah, actually, it's not so good. If you say bad things, say, actually, is it really that bad? Not so bad. Okay, so accept your everything. <laughs> like, yeah, I'm I'm poor in this. I'm lousy. Yes. <laughs> oh, I'm good. Okay, yes. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> then what? You know, let's exactly. move on. Yeah. So yeah. so when you do that, you accept. You are able to accept everything for what they are. I feel I'm a happier person now. I was uh, a bit more stubborn, more principled, probably. I was okay. a more difficult person to deal with, okay. maybe. Uh, we, we knew each other from a long time ago. I, I think I'm a lot more serious previously. I'm a lot yeah. lighter now. It's I like, feel the lightness in really? you now. Yeah, I do. I do. Not because I'm just like, we're trying to wear like light pink, light blue, light yellow. I'm, I thought like today I'm supposed to like look happy. Oh, right? <laughs> so, yeah. <laughs> no, but I actually don't need this uh, at this point. When I was younger, I, I like to be brighter. Oh. Uh, usually now I'm just a bit more subtle, you know. Okay. So, so I feel that um, I'm happiest now because I, I just accepted everything and it's just like that. Like, what you see is what you get. Uh, I mean, after all the years of uh, good stuff and the bad stuff and the criticism or whatever, it's like, yeah, that that's just it. I can't change anything that I right. cannot change. Yeah. Uh, I keep doing better, of course. Yeah. Right? So it's all just growing, part of the growing process. Uh, sure. Learning to come to terms with yourself and everyone around. So now, I'm, I think I'm a lot more open and I, I, I it's important that I'm... I like to see people around me happy as well. Yeah. Previously, I was very just task oriented. I was like, if this is wrong, I would say it. like, no, it's just not. Right. You know. But now I'm, I can do it maybe in a softer way or a different way. Yeah. Or I say things that people probably like to hear more. But not, that's not being a hypocrite. Okay. Uh, that's me understanding that it's important to take care of uh, everyone around as well. Yeah. It wasn't that I didn't care about people previously, but the way I did it. Right. So okay. I feel like uh, I'm much easier and happier now. 
you've grown so much. Oh my gosh, this yeah, awareness yeah, yeah. is great. I mean, yeah, yeah, you know, because it doesn't hit everybody. I think that's really wonderful that you're in a good place. I was I was reminded of something actually that I wanted to ask you because uh, you having a sense of humor about everything. Your bandong outfit, <laughs> oh. I loved it, and I love even more. Are we still more. talking about that? Yes, <laughs> and, no, and, I love it. I, <laughs> yeah, I just mix the bandong. It's like. <laughs> What I really love was your reaction to it all. I mean, that was perfect. That's exactly what I was like so proud of you that okay. you, know, you did that. Right, right, right. What do you want me to do then? I don't <laughs> Nothing know. I, I could mean, do, like, right? you know, because I mean, another a different person <laughs> right. might have reacted differently to it. Uh, okay. But you just embraced it and went with it and just retweeted and I mean, reposted the stuff. It was yeah. great. It was quite fun because I felt like <laughs> it was very creative. Like, why didn't I think about that? Like, when I wore it, I didn't think of that drink. So it's like, wow, single. Singaporeans are really a, a wonderful bunch. <laughs> Interesting. Yeah. Elvin, let's talk about your mom. How has she been? Oh, how about my mom? You heard something about her? <laughs> <laughs> I want to know whether she's okay. You know, how's everything like with the pandemic and all that? My mom well. is an interesting character. Yeah. <laughs> I think I take after her a lot. Yeah. Uh, so even until today, uh, so for a while, maybe this past two, three years, I've learned to like lighten, uh, lighten up a lot more. And then I'll be trying to change my mom a little because I feel like I'm exactly like her. Oh. We fight over the same things. We are like fighting fire with fire. We have the <laughs> same pattern, you know? Yeah. Um, she's she's more of a, always uh, like everything is a problem. Okay. Uh, uh, she focuses on all the black spots, only the black spots. And even if it's purely fine and it's like perfectly fine, she'll always find something. There's yeah. always picking some problem right <laughs> okay. so I keep trying to change her like mom be happier be more optimistic it's hard to tell that uh, it's been hard on her because uh, my dad passed away very early at 57 uh, so my mom was alone of course now I'm glad that we all stayed together my yeah. whole family so um, uh, so my brother sister everyone with the, the grandchildren are there how do you how do you help somebody um, you think who is going through something like that? I'm sure like our viewers and our audience uh, members who are tuned in right now, right. you know, have people around them who <coughs> are sad or are just not in a good place emotionally and mentally. Yeah. How, as a, as a son to your mom, right? How how can you help, you think? Yeah. I think for a while, I, I tried to educate my mom, teach her, try to change her. But seriously, uh, I don't think at this age you are able to be changed, sort of. like. So don't impose yourself on them. Mm. I think it's easy to say I still do that. I'm trying to let go. And what you can really change is yourself. You have to accept them for who they are and change yourself. And when they see a change in you, maybe they are more accepting of changing and seeing because you have changed. Mm. Yeah, I'm still learning that. <laughs> I'm still trying. It's really not easy. <laughs> Yeah, so uh, it's really not uh, dealing with mum, it's really dealing with yourself. Mm. Uh, dealing with yourself, how you accept it, how you take it, how you are going to deal with it. So again, it's about awareness. So for anyone who's like going through any kind of grief in their life, um, going through a loss of a loved one, do you have any anecdotes of wisdom that you can impart <laughs> <laughs> on how to deal, maybe. Uh, okay, why don't I ask you that question? What oh my god! For me, yeah. I think, um, like we mentioned earlier, I feel like you just have to feel the feelings when you're mm -hmm. sad. Let yourself be sad. Yeah. I actually thought that my misconception about grief was that once it happens, you're sad and then you stop feeling sad. You know, I, I, I just had that idea that okay. I don't know why. I mean, right. I've never really gone through a, a loss of such a close person, like your parent. So I just thought like after, <laughs> after maybe like six months to a year tops, I'm just going to stop feeling sad. I'm going to accept it. Then I realized that, oh my gosh, no, Elvin. It's like, I'm, I, there's always a part of me that is brokenhearted about it. Right. And then I realized it's not so bad. So mm -hmm. I realized that this brokenheartedness makes me remember my mom mm -hmm. and makes me remember that I have so much love for her even right. until now. Right. You know, this thing happened, right? It happened. But we know that it is going to happen. It will always happen. Everyone's going to face it, right? Yeah. So I actually think that when you are being prepared for it. Prepared for it meaning basically you're embracing now. You understand that future is going to be like that. It is definitely going to happen, right? So what I'm saying is first, there is death. 
before there is life. Mm-hmm. I'm a bit of a, okay. You have to understand the concept of death. It is right there. It is always just there. And when you understand that, it's not a very dark. It's not dark. What I'm saying. It's actually very empowering. It's actually very. Uh, it feels light because then you realize that you actually have to deal with it now. You are dealing with death right now because you want to take care of your loved ones. You want to treasure them. Now, you don't want to live with any regrets. You don't want to have regrets. You know things are happening, uh, going to happen. So don't wait till after death because when after death, we don't even know what death is and after that, what happens, you know. Yep. Uh, you don't have to deal with it then. You deal with it now. I see. Yeah. Different perspectives <laughs> about how to see death and grief and I think a lot of us have learned also a little bit about changing a perspective about it, which is very, very refreshing, I have to say. So I know you're a bit of a green-fingered person. You have a lot of plants <laughs> in your house. So you must, you know, are able to um, breathe life into your plants. So okay. we have, I have a plant here and I know mm-hmm. you have a plant, a potted plant on your right. Okay. right. So I thought, you know, and studies have shown that positive affirmations to plants <laughs> help plants grow better. So I thought we could give positive affirmations to right. our plants. Mine looks okay. worse for wear. I think yours looks a bit <laughs> yes. better than mine. Yes, it looks like it's more moisturizing. <laughs> yeah. And apparently, like when you talk to your plants, um, you also you know end up feeling better about yourself. Do you do that? No, do you talk to your plants? Actually, I, I do. I think you you talk to yourself, you talk to the things around you, you talk to the <laughs> sky, you talk to anything, you know, if it makes you feel better. That's true. Uh, because yeah. sometimes you, you you don't feel so alone because you feel like all these things are with you, you know. Yeah, like true. I talk to my, maybe if I, uh, I talk to my fish, I talk to, yeah. yeah. Yeah, even talk to the lizard, it's okay. That's hilarious. <laughs> I say something, it's like, oh my God, you just scared me, you're like, get lost. <laughs> <laughs> That's great. Okay, yeah. well, do you want to start Saying positive affirmations to your to your plant. Should I give it a name? Should I give it a name? Xiao Cute. Xiao Cute. <laughs> <laughs> Hello, Xiao Cute. You you um you are the sun, the moon, and the stars. You can grow up to be whatever you want to be. Be a big, proud, moisturized plant in a few days, okay? You can do it! You can grow. <laughs> All right, that's my that's my positive. Effort. I find it quite funny, actually. Oh my god, it felt like propaganda, or exactly. like it felt very like um, you know nowadays people like uh, plants also like subliminal messaging. Exactly, that right? was a bit out there. So it has there. to be a bit more subtle. <laughs> Yeah. Because why? You have to understand that they are smarter than they can be smarter that than us, true. right? You have to keep them at the same level. That right? is true. So you shouldn't be speaking like that. Oh my god. <laughs> no, 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 but that's Sorry, very, Xiao Qiu. No, I was just joking. <laughs> but that's very motherly. And you are talking like to a child. Yes. Right? Yes. Yeah. That's the maternal people. instincts, right? So when? <laughs> uh no. <laughs> I have a dog. <laughs> I have a dog. <laughs> so we'll see what happens in a few weeks, lah, huh? Elvin, I'll tell you about it too. So how how are you gonna Subliminally <laughs> positive affirm your plan. <laughs> That's like look into my eyes. <laughs> um, <laughs> I think all the good that you are doing, you are doing perfectly fine. Keep keep at it, right? And um, if there are some things that are not as good about you, it's okay. It's okay. You don't have to be perfect. It's all right. Just be organic. Just do what you are doing. You are doing fine. Uh, and uh, I can see you uh, blossoming and I can see you really being healthy um, sooner rather than later. Yeah, you are doing great actually. Wow! You know what's going to happen? A leaf is going to come out right now! <laughs> <laughs> okay! That's incredible! Oh, Even I felt encouraged if I were the, if I were the plant. That was so lovely. Thank you, Elvin, for being here today. It was thank lovely. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Hope you enjoyed the episode with Elvin. And make sure you stay tuned for more. I'm Jean Decker for the Are You OK podcast. Bye. <laughs> and then, then I'm like, well, how? OK, fine. We have to drive back then. Yeah. So we drove back and then obviously we were late already. I was driving really fast and then when we reached the school, by the time it was really 7.25, you know, the bell rings at 7.30 and I'm like, 
okay, just go, just go. Don't don't need to you don't, don't need to salam me or whatever. Just go. Yeah. Then my son actually stopped me and said, but mommy, what if this is the last time I ever see you? Is oh this how? God. Is this how you want to end it? I'm like, oh my god, bro. 